Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to talk about components of an algorithm. Every algorithm has different parts. This may include some or all of these variables and values, instructions, sequences of instructions, procedures, selections, repetitions, and documentation. What are instructions? Instructions simply refer to simple actions. These actions should be unambiguous. It means that the system should know about them and then when you give these instructions, the system should actually be able to do these instructions. Example of an instruction will be cough, count, cut along, knit, pair, sift. Consider all the things that we have discussed right now. You see that these are directions to perform specific actions on values and variables. Let's look at a particular example. Consider an instruction like chop. When you are cooking and you want to issue an instruction like chop, chop can only be applied to certain type of ingredients right you cannot say that uh, somebody cooking should chop for instance a teddy bear a wine bottle or a wine glass you understand so instructions can only be applied to specific type of values or variables one thing we should note is that when you are issuing out your instructions the instructions should be unambiguous and very very clear it should also be very simple do not try to create very complicated statement it should be straight to the point very simple very unambiguous let's consider an example below when you look at the example the first example cut kitchen sorry cut chicken into pieces and brown the pieces on all side in the casserole dish on hot oil olive oil Let's put this alongside or let's consider another way that we can rewrite this instruction. Cut chicken into pieces. This is a full instruction. Heat olive oil in casserole dish. This is also another instruction. Brown the chicken pieces in the casserole dish. This is also another instruction. So you see that Trying to create one complicated sentence, we can break it down into three simple sentences, which makes it very clear and very unambiguous. So in summary, we can say that whenever you are writing your algorithms, your algorithm should be lucid, precise, unambiguous. Give the correct solution in all cases. Eventually, your algorithm should have an end. Whenever you are designing your algorithm, there are some things that you should take note of. Designing an algorithm isn't an easy task. It is one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging task in your program development life cycle. So, you should take note of this. Again, remember that because it is very difficult to come up with an algorithm, Usually, your first attempt would not result in the final product. You would have to iterate this several times before getting a solution that is really perfect. So, when you try it the first time and it doesn't work, don't be discouraged. It happens to everybody. Again, once you try it and you don't get what you are looking for, keep changing it until you get the perfect algorithm that you are looking for it may even work but might not be the most efficient way of solving the problem so continue to explore different ways of solving your problem and you would eventually come up with the best solution that you can also remember these things when you are designing your algorithms your algorithm should be given a name remember the name 
should describe what your algorithm is supposed to do. Again, you should use an end statement as the very last item in your algorithm when writing down your algorithm. This would mark where everything stops. Again, remember that all processing steps between algorithms should be between the name that you have given the algorithm and then the keyword end. Remember when we said that when you are given a problem, you should define your summary table. Inside your summary table, we said you can break it up into three different parts. The input, the output, and then the processing. So, once you list down your processing steps, remember that these processing steps can be one simple statement or one step can constitute multiple processing statements. So don't be alarmed when you find one step giving you multiple processing statements. Now using these steps that we talked about, let's see if we can solve a problem that we've been given. First, we are going to define our summary table, which will consist of the inputs, the outputs, and the processing sections. Let's look at a problem. The problem says, a program is required to read three numbers, add them together, and print their total. How do we approach this? By first designing our summary table. Our summary table has three columns, the input, the output, and then the processing. Looking at the problem, our program is required to read three numbers, meaning that our input would be three numbers. That's number one, number two, and number three. Again, look at how we have chosen the names of the container that we expect to house the three numbers that will be provided by the user. So anytime you are expecting an input from the user, Create a container, receive the item from the user, and put it into the container. And then when everything is done, you also create another container called total, which will house the sum of these three numbers. So, when you have been able to identify what the user will supply to your software, which is the input, and what your software is expected to give out to the user, which is your output. We now need to identify what will be at the processing column. What should be at the processing column should be the actual task that you have been asked to do. How do we identify these things? First of all, try to identify all the verbs in the problem that you've been given. If we look at the problem that we're given, we're asked to read, add, and then print. So you see that this points us to the direction of what exactly is being required of us to do. And so once we go to the processing section, what we are going to do is to fill it with read, add, and then print. We are supposed to read three numbers, add the three numbers together, and then print the total. And so once we have identified all of this, we can safely now come and then write our algorithm. Read three numbers, add numbers together, print out the total. And with these three lines of instructions, we have successfully developed our first algorithm. Now let's consider another example. The example states that, a program is required to prompt the terminal operator for maximum and minimum temperature readings on a particular date. Accept those readings as integers and calculate and display to the screen the average temperature calculated by maximum temperature plus minimum temperature divided by 2. Again, in this case, we are going to use the same approach. Let us identify the inputs in this problem. Inputs are always what you expect your software to receive in order to complete the task. And so in this particular case, we realize that the problem says that we require what the maximum and temperature readings from the operator. And then what will be our output? 
our output is always going to be what we are going to give out from our software at the end of the day and in this case our output is going to be the average temperature so in our table we outline max temp min temp average temp why max temp min temp remember whenever you are expecting values like i said you need to store them in a container we'll talk more about variables and values but for now what we should keep in mind is that anytime we are expecting an input from the user we need to create a container that will house this input and then anytime we expect to generate a value we need to create a container that will house that value our values cannot be hanging in the air or hanging in our computer we need to create a space within memory to store it so you see that we created that space and we gave the space a name so the max underscore temp that you see here is the name that we are given to the space that we are going to keep our first input which is the maximum input and then the main underscore temp that you see here is the name we've given to our space within memory where we'll store our minimum temperature and then when the calculation is done a new value will be generated that value is going to be stored in a different location within memory and the name of that location is avg underscore temp again in this case we would identify what we've been asked to do or the processing step by underlining the verbs within the problem that we've been given so we've been asked to prompt accept calculate and then distribute so when we go to our table this is how our table is going to look like and this can be translated into our algorithm now take a pause here and then consider the problem on the screen see if you can come up with your own summary table 